Hi, I'm John Covey, the creator of Ion, a compound building game. And I'm going to take the next few minutes to show you how to play. Let me start with a quick overview. So in Ion, the goal is to get the most points by creating neutrally charged compounds or sets of noble gases. Each player is dealt a hand of eight cards. They'll select one and play it in front of them. And then we'll pass the remaining cards to the player on their left, receiving a hand of cards from the player on their right. This card selection process continues for one round, at the end of which players will score points based upon the type and quantity of cards in front of them. Players also have a set of action tiles, which they can use to gain additional actions throughout the game. After three rounds, players add their scores for each round, and the player with the most points wins the game. I should note that there's a radioactive card expansion included in the game. I'll go over how to play that expansion after I explain how to play the base game. First, let's go over those tiles. Flip all of the tiles so the point side is facing up, like this. These tiles come in sets of threes and you can find the sets by matching them according to these letters. After that, flip the matching sets of three tiles point side down and randomly give one set to each player. Players should not look at the point side of these tiles. Put any unused sets of tiles back in the box. Now it's time to set up the cards. There are two different types of cards in the game and you can tell them apart by their backs. These are the drafting cards and these are the compound goal cards. Shuffle each deck separately. If you're playing with four players or less, remove the cards with this five plus symbol in the corner, and then flip two of the remaining cards face up in the center of the table. If you're playing with five or more players, leave the cards with the five plus symbol in the deck and flip three gold cards instead. These cards indicate specific compounds which will score players additional points if built. Now, pick up the drafting cards. If you don't want to play with the radioactive expansion just yet, remove them from the drafting cards and place them back in the box. Now flip four of these cards face up in the center of the table, close to the goal cards. The arrangement doesn't really matter. If any of these cards are the same, replace them with new drafting cards until all four cards are unique. Lastly, deal eight drafting cards to each player. This makes up a player's hand. Game setup is now complete and you're ready to play the game. But before we get into the actual gameplay, Let's go over our objective. Your objective is to create neutrally charged compounds. Let me show you what I mean. Each ion has a charge, either positive, indicated by this plus sign, or negative, indicated by this negative sign. A compound is neutrally charged, and thus scores points, if it has an equal number of positive and negative charges. For example, a card with a positive charge of one, say hydrogen, will form a neutral compound if it is bonded to a card with a negative charge of one, say fluoride. With magnesium, which has a charge of positive two, you will need two negatively charged cards to form a neutral compound. However, they must both be the same type of card. You cannot form a neutrally charged compound by bonding one chloride and then one hydroxide to your magnesium card. Noble gas cards are different because they have no charge and so they are already neutral and thus always score points automatically. Okay, now that we understand our objective, let's get back to gameplay. Like I mentioned before, each player starts with a hand of eight cards, must select one of those cards, and then place it face down in front of them. Once all players have placed a card face down, they'll reveal them simultaneously. Now this revealed card must be either bonded to another card or set alone. But don't let this scare you. Bonding cards is simple, and it's how you form your neutrally charged compounds with your cards. To bond cards, simply place one on top of the other, like this. Now you can see the charges in the upper left corner of the cards, and the point value on the lower left side of the cards. If you don't want to bond two cards, simply place them far away from each other. Next, all players should pass their remaining cards to the player on their left, and repeat the steps I just described. This process is repeated until players have only two remaining cards, which are then discarded. This marks the end of the round, and it's time to score points for that round. But before we get into scoring, let's go over the action tiles. 
At any point during the game, a player may choose to flip over any number of their action tiles and take the additional action shown on that tile. Flipping an action tile does not replace a player's normal turn. Rather, these actions are combined with the player's normal turn. Once a player flips an action tile, it is exhausted for the rest of the game. And at the end of the game, that player will lose an amount of points equal to the number shown on the back of their tiles. By flipping the Select 2 tile, a player may select two cards from their hand instead of just one and play both of them. Just remember to replace the additional card taken from that hand with one from the draw pile to ensure that the number of cards in each hand is consistent. By flipping the Take from Center tile, a player may select one of the four available drafting cards from the center of the table and play it in front of them. Remember, this action is in addition to the player's normal turn of selecting one card from their hand. By flipping the Reaction or RXN tile, a player may rearrange any or all of the cards in their player area. If they wish, they may also take any one non-scoring card from an opposing player's player area. But they may not take this card until that opposing player has discarded their final two cards, marking their last turn for that round. Okay, let's talk about how to count up your points. Counting points is simple. All cards that are part of neutral compounds as well as noble gas cards score points. All cards that are left with unbalanced charges do not score points. Here's an example. This compound, sodium chloride, is neutrally charged. The sodium card has a positive charge of one and the chloride card has a negative charge of one. So it forms a neutral compound. The sodium is worth three points while the chloride is worth four points. So it scores three, plus four, or seven points total. This compound, magnesium fluoride, is also neutrally charged. Since the magnesium card has a positive charge of two, each fluoride card has a negative charge of one, and there are two fluoride cards. So it scores five, plus three, plus three, for a total of 11 points. This chlorine, however, does not score points because it has a negative charge that is not balanced by being bonded to a card with a positive charge. Since noble gas cards have no charge, they always score points. Any single noble gas card scores two points. Two different noble gas cards score five points, and three different noble gas cards score nine points. If a player has formed a compound that is listed on one of the compound goal cards, they'll score additional points. If the goal card bears a 2-5, then a player scores two points for forming one of the compounds on that goal card and five points for forming both of the compounds on that card. If the goal card bears a 3-7, then a player scores three points for forming one and seven for forming both. Action tiles do not count towards points at the end of the round. Rather, they are scored only once at the very end of the game. Once points are scored and recorded for that round, collect all drafting cards and compound goal cards and repeat the game setup for the next round of gameplay. At the end of the third round, the points for all previous rounds are added together and points lost from exhausted action tiles are subtracted. The player with the most points wins the game. And that's how you play Ion. But hold on a second. There are a few cards that allow you to do things a little bit differently. Those are the transition metal cards, and the polyatomic ion cards, and of course, the expansion, radioactive cards. We'll talk about all of these next. For a simpler game with a younger audience or in a chemistry class, you may want to play the game a few times without those additional cards. For a really simple game, you can even remove the action tiles and the four face-up drafting cards in the center of the table. But for a crowd wanting a bit more strategy, these components should remain in the game. Transition metals are played and bonded just like all other ions, except that they bear two different charges depending upon which way you turn them. The charge is always in the upper left corner while the point value is always in the lower left. Once you have passed your hand, you may not change your transition metal's charge unless you exhaust a reaction tile. Polyatomic ion cards are played and bonded just like all other ion cards except that a player may choose from two different scoring options. The first scoring option is to receive the number of points shown on the card, here. The second scoring option is to refresh any one exhausted action tile 
by flipping it so that the point side is down once again. The radioactive card expansion is intended for three or more players. To play with this expansion, shuffle the radioactive cards into the drafting deck, just like all other drafting cards. Now instead of dealing each player eight cards, deal them nine to start. Then continue with game setup and game play as indicated in the regular rules. Radioactive cards score points in two different ways, at the end of each round and then again at the end of the game. The amount of points they score is dependent on the number of players in the game. Here's how each works. Once all players have flipped their chosen drafting cards face up, look to see if multiple people played a radioactive card that turn. If two players flipped a radioactive card, they should both turn their radioactive cards 90 degrees. If three or more players flipped a radioactive card, they should flip those cards face down. In a three or four player game, Radioactive cards that are still right side up, meaning that only one player flipped a radioactive card that turn, score two points at the end of the round. If they're turned 90 degrees or face down, they'll score zero points. In a five to seven player game, radioactive cards that are still right side up score three points at the end of the round. Radioactive cards that are turned 90 degrees score only one point. However, if they are face down, those cards lose two points. And this is important. Players won't shuffle these cards back into the drafting deck at the end of the round, like all other drafting cards. Rather, they stay in front of each player to be counted for in-game scoring. And here's how that works. For end-of-game scoring, the position of a radioactive card, whether it's 90 degrees or face down, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is this number here, called the radioactive decay. Each player should add up the total radioactive decay from all of their radioactive cards they played during the game. Now in a three or four player game, the player with the most radioactive decay receives an additional nine points. The player with the second most receives an additional three points, and the player with the least radioactive decay loses three points. In a five to seven player game, the player with the most radioactive decay receives 13 points. The player with the second most receives an additional nine points, the player with the third most receives an additional three points, and the player with the least radioactive decay loses three points. Well, that's it. You now know how to play Ion, and hopefully you've learned a little bit of chemistry along the way. For other games like this, check out our website at gotgeniusgames.com. And remember, why study science when you can play it?